Welcome back to State of Belief Radio, everyone. I'm Welton Gaddy. There it was, late last month, in Religion Dispatches magazine, the latest challenge in the frustrating life-and-death game of whack-a-mole that LGBT advocates keep having to play against the radical anti-gay right. As if attacks on the LGBT advances in the U.S. weren't enough, Loaded with the poisonous language of Satanism, Nazism, un-Americanism, as if the wholesale export of homophobia to Russia, Africa, and beyond, cloaked in the language of religious morality, weren't enough, now they're going after the United Nations. The author of the Religion Dispatch's article exposing this gambit is philosopher and activist Austin Dacey. He's a former representative to the United Nations for the International Humanist and Ethical Union, and I am so pleased to have him join us right now on State of Belief Radio. Dr. Dacey, welcome. It's my pleasure. So what happened last month at the U.N. that you found so disturbing? What's disturbing is that there is a new attempt to cunningly appropriate the language of of human rights, human rights discourse about economic development, about children's health and rights, and to enlist it in the service, as as you say, of this worldwide campaign against LGBTQ rights. And this was really dramatized in, in a bit of political theater with a, a new declaration of the rights of families, which was read out um, in a, uh, a side event at the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, Switzerland. And this declaration on the rights of children and their families um, lays out uh, a, an unprecedented right under international human rights law anyway, um, of each child to have a heterosexual uh, married couple as its parents. So, Dr. Dacey, summarize, please, the Declaration on the Rights of Children and Their Families. That's, that is uh, what you were starting to do. What, what, uh, tell us about it and what is so terribly troubling about it? Well, it's a, it's an attempt to use, as I say, the the language of human rights in order to defend what are really unprecedented claims under human rights law. Um, children, in fact, do have a um, a the full human rights and uh, their rights are defended under the 1989 Convention on the Rights of the Child. Um, and so the rights of children are already protected, although much more could be done in enforcing those international covenants. Your listeners may know that the United States is uh, alone in the world, well, with the good company of South Sudan and Somalia, in having not ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Notwithstanding that, the the rights of children are already firmly ensconced in human rights law. What this uh, what this conservative organization is attempting to do is to use legitimate concern for children's rights and turn it into uh, a specious argument for. Uh, the heterosexual family as the only morally and internationally legally permissible unit. It's a a very sneaky, unethical strategy that they're using. And my next question to you is, uh, will members of the UN get it? Will they see that this campaign is not what they are billing it to be? Well, I think Russia Russia certainly got it. They were uh, a sponsor of the room, at least they reserved the room for the American Conservative Organization, which was, which was sponsoring this group, Family Watch International. 
But I should say for, for those of you who don't um, understand the, the complexities of the UN system, the declaration that was presented in the last month, of course, of course has no legally binding status. Um, what is more important is the the Human Rights Council itself, which is a democratic body in which UN member states can deliberate and pass resolutions. These are legally non-binding, but they carry great moral force in the imprimatur of the United Nations. And this recent attempt is really part of a much larger context in which the struggle over LGBTQ rights at the United Nations has become the new lightning rod um, between uh, countries such as the U.S. and the European Union in particular, and many countries within the so-called Organization of the Islamic Conference, led by Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, but joined, interestingly, by China and Russia in this case. And so the real action, I would, I would say, and even the more disturbing problem is that, um, that gay and lesbian rights uh, as parents and as, as persons have not yet found a firm uh, home in the international legal system. Austin, who's behind this? Behind this movement is a group that calls itself the UN Family Rights Caucus. And behind that is a US-based, Arizona-based organization called Family Watch International, which is run by um, an activist named Sharon Slater, who is well known among many progressives for her globetrotting activism against LGBTQ equality and um, public health policies that include condom use as well. Mm -hmm. The Family Watch International has been deeply involved in promoting, as I say in the article, abstinence and fidelity only initiatives in, in Uganda and is on record as praising Nigeria as a, quote, strong role model for other regional governments on how to defend family values um, in the face of international pressure towards equality. Dr. Daisy, is it uh, too simplistic to ask if you can draw a direct line from the radical right culture war in the U.S. Uh, and overseas to this United Nations effort? It's not. I, I can't say that I've done all that research, but others have, and what they found is that the language of family values was actually you know, deliberately introduced by U.S. activists into these international fora. There were workshops on how to uh, use the defense of the family and defense of children's rights um, to to appropriate legitimate human rights concerns, and um, so that 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 line is there. I want our listeners to understand the seriousness of the issue we're talking about. What's the worst case scenario here, and how widespread could the impact uh, from endorsements of this uh, uh, new statement be? Well, I, I want to emphasize that the the declaration on the rights of children and their families is really a small piece of theater by one NGO at the uh, Human Rights Council. The, the, um, the legal struggle, the struggle over the, the meaning, the definition, and enforcement of human rights norms is perhaps more, uh, um, more important, and that is that um, there is no uh, there is no protection of LGBTQ equality under the existing human rights treaties. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. um, sexual discrimination, discrimination on the basis of sex is prohibited by these treaties. Um, but not gender identity or or sexual identity, sexual minorities are not protected as such. And the worst case scenario is that that this that this continues and that these um, hostile countries using the democratic mechanisms at the UN can continue to block the push for equality under international law. Who's working? to challenge this? Well, a number of U.S. gay rights groups are at least watching and, and monitoring this closely. The, the United States, uh, which has been back at and active at the Human Rights Council since the start of the Obama administration, which is now under the leadership of Ambassador Samantha Power. The U.S. has been actually a leader and has been working closely with allies at the Council. Um, recently there was a debate in, in this last uh, 26th session of the Council in which um, a resolution calling for the protection of the family was passed. And the U.S. was was joined by Austria, um, Chile, the Czech Republic, Estonia, France, Germany, Ireland, um, Japan, Korea, and the U.K. in opposing this resolution um, and attempting to insert language, which was eventually defeated by a procedural tactic, um, affirming that there are many forms or various forms, as it said, of the family. Um, so there is a, a coalition of liberal democratic states um, that are, 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 are fighting against this, um, but they really need help from the NGO community. How can uh, our listeners help? And it's got to be a very brief answer, unfortunately. I would encourage your listeners to check in with human rights groups like Human Rights Watch and the Human Rights Campaign and Amnesty International um, to see what they're doing. Um, and my own closest connection is with, with the Center for Inquiry, a, a secular humanist think tank, which is it's at the UN as well. Dr. Austin Dacey is a former representative to the United Nations for the International Humanist and Ethical Union, an activist and philosopher. Dr. Dacey is the author of the book, The Future of Blasphemy, Speaking of the Sacred in an Age of Human Rights. His warning about the Declaration on the Rights of Children and Their Families appears in Religion Dispatches under the headline, At the UN, Conservative Christian Agenda Cloaked in Human Rights Language. Dr. Dacey, this is a terribly important expose, and I hope that people will pay attention before it's too late. You're doing your part. Thanks for coming and talking with us about it. Uh, we welcome you to State of Belief Radio, and we will welcome you back anytime. Thanks so much, Reverend Gatting.